We had something interesting happen to us this week at the homestead. A bomb cyclone hit our area. Thousands of people were without power, including us. It brought me back to think about what it was like during the times of no electricity, no refrigeration, and surviving on the land alone. So join me in the kitchen today as we rediscover cooking from scratch, and I show you what I made for my family this week. So we had a bomb cyclone come across in our area. It is an extreme change in pressure in the atmosphere that causes a large storm, gives a lot of wind and just crazy weather. We've never had these in our area before, at least not that I know of. All of a sudden it just got super windy overnight and then everyone lost power. Miles and miles of people without power and thousands and thousands of people. As of today, it's been a week since the storm and there are still a couple thousand people without power. We got our power back after only a little over 24 hours, which is probably the best that I know of. Most people, it was two days, three days, four days, five, six. For some reason, we're, we are on a nice electrical grid, so we got power back pretty fast. But this is some video footage of our morning that we woke up without any power. We have a couple of portable grills and we cooked our breakfast on those. I'm also really thankful that I had just went grocery shopping and I had just made two loaves of bread. So we were good on food. The only problem is we were trying to not open the fridge or the freezer because of course they didn't have power. So we were losing our food soon. Now my parents have a generator, so we were planning on going over to their house to put our food in their fridge just to keep it cool so we didn't lose it. The freezer we figured was fine for another day or so because it was still so cold and we just weren't opening it. Despite the scare of the extreme weather and everything, it was actually really fun to just enjoy the morning without power. Being more primitive and relying less on technology is a breath of fresh air. I wish we could live like this all of the time. Now our world isn't really built for it. We need electricity, we need Wi-Fi, and I'm really thankful for those things. But in the rare circumstances that we can't have those items, I always welcome the peaceful, dark, candlelit type of lifestyle whenever it comes our way. power back, it was time to cook for my family and find beauty in the kitchen like I normally do. Our house is about 25% decorated for Christmas. The floors are not entirely clean. We've got some rotting wood on the outside of our house that needs to be fixed. Nothing is ever perfect all at one time. Whether it's a natural disaster or a leaky pipe or faucet, the holiday rush of buying gifts for people, getting a Christmas tree set up and decorations. There's always something in life that is taking you away from just the basics. Something that is asking you for attention when you want and maybe should be focusing more on just serving your family through food and general care. If we have a roof over our heads, warmth and light, and a little bit of food, that's all we really need. Today I'm making sourdough einkorn dinner rolls. These are warm and cozy and the perfect complement to just about any lunch or dinner. They're a staple that should just stay on your countertop recipe rotation, especially if you like einkorn and sourdough. The ingredients are a half a cup sourdough starter, three tablespoons butter softened, one cup milk, one and a half teaspoon salt, quarter cup honey, three and three quarter cup einkorn flour, one egg whisked for the egg wash on top, and a tablespoon of olive oil. You're gonna add all the ingredients to a stand-up mixer and let mix with the dough hook for 10 minutes. Perform three stretch and folds about one to two hours apart. Cover with plastic and let sit in the fridge overnight. The next day, bring it to room temperature for about 30 minutes. Grease a nine by 12 baking dish with oil or butter. Place the dough on a floured clean countertop and use a bench scraper or sharp knife to cut it into 12 pieces. 
Roll them into balls and pinch the bottom to create tension in each dough ball. Place the dough balls in the baking dish and cover with a tea towel. Let sit in a warm location for two to four hours or until about doubled in size, and then bake at 375 for 20 minutes. makes a really big difference in my day when I take the time to get myself ready in the morning. The quiet mornings before the kids wake up, taking that time in the bathroom by myself to put my makeup on and just get ready for the day really sets a great tone. Tubes & Co. Organic Skin Care makes that really easy for me. Tubes & Co. believes that skincare should not only be effective and worth buying, but also actually good for your skin because since the skin is the largest organ of the body, you are absorbing it just like as if you were eating food. Tubes & Co. Skin Care and Makeup Line is 100% natural and uses only organic ingredients like tallow, aloe vera, cold pressed olive oil. They never use synthetic chemicals, GMOs, toxins, fillers, or artificial colors or fragrances. I'm currently wearing the Tubes & Co Eye Shadow and Mascara. I love that this palette actually works as well as my old makeup used to and I don't have to feel bad about wearing it on my skin every day. I like to start with the lighter color on my eyelids and then go a little bit darker for the crease and then the darkest one on the corner and kind of bring it up through the crease. I'm also wearing the Tubes & Co Mascara. Even if I don't wear makeup in the day, I still like to at least put something moisturizing on my skin before bed. The Tubes & Co Seabuck Thorn Cleansing Oil is my absolute favorite. I love using this as a makeup remover. I just put it on a cotton swab and gently cleanse my face with it. And then if I don't have any makeup on at all, I can just be done with it for the day. But if I did have makeup on, then I'll usually follow up with a quick rinse with some soap. Typical makeup removers remove everything from your skin, including healthy oils and good bacteria. And I like that this will not do that. It's only going to remove the makeup. If you are looking to switch to non-toxic makeup, be sure to use my link below to shop the Tubes & Co Black Friday sale when their entire site is 20% off. As it has been the week of Thanksgiving here in the homestead, we've been reading a lot about the original Thanksgiving with the pilgrims and the Indians. I always think about how people did not have food when they first arrived here. They had to figure out how to harvest. They had to figure out how to find. They had to figure out how to find it on the land. Sometimes they were just eating dried bread or maybe berries from the forest that they didn't even know were safe or not. When someone finally taught them how to plant food and fish, they were so thankful. And when they finally saw their food come up and harvest it and then finally get to eat their corn, there was no greater happiness that they had ever felt than that moment. We are so lucky today to have grocery stores and food at our fingertips. We can even get it delivered to us if we want. We don't even have to leave our house. Well, I really appreciate that luxury. The only problem is there's kind of a disconnect that it creates with us and the land. So many of us don't know what it's like to plant seeds and cultivate crops and harvest. And if you do know about how to do that, you appreciate your food so much more. Not only is it healthier, more nutrient dense, when you are eating freshly grown food from your local area, but it creates a more thankful person as well. You become less reliant on sugars and artificial flavoring and how the food looks, and you're more focused on just the fact that you grew it and that you get to eat it, and that is just enough. For lunch today, I'm making a butternut squash soup. I'm gonna add some sausage and serve it up with these homemade dinner rolls.
morning my mom took the kids to the park for me, so I had a little extra time to cook some lunch. I'm gonna roast this squash first. I can't remember if this is called a delicata squash. I wanna say I might be wrong there. But these are my favorites because, but this is one of my favorite squashes because it's so easy to cut and roast. It's nice and long, very easy to scoop. Today I'm gonna to make einkorn ravioli. This is a homemade ravioli recipe without a pasta machine, you just need a roller, and it's made with a savory, cheesy squash filling. It's really not that hard to whip up. I was inspired by a recipe that I actually buy at the grocery store. Whenever we go grocery shopping, they have a lunch area and they make this butternut squash ravioli that it's just so good. I've made this recipe many times in the past and even frozen the ravioli to have on hand for another time. So it's a great way to have a nourishing quick lunch. If you have extra time one day, you can make a whole bunch of these and then store them in the freezer to whip out for a very quick lunch another day. Einkorn, if you don't already know, is an ancient grain that is higher in protein and contains less gluten than modern grain. It's non-hybridized, so it's a lot healthier for you. The recipe for this is two and a half cups einkorn flour, one and a half teaspoon salt, three large eggs, two large egg yolks, and two tablespoons of olive oil. And the filling is one roasted squash, or you could use one 15 ounce can of barnet squash, two cloves of garlic, three tablespoons cheese, two tablespoons sage, one teaspoon garlic powder, and two teaspoons salt and pepper to taste. I have the recipe and tutorial for this on the blog, theduvalhomestead.com, so I'll link that below as well. Not every day do I make complete meals from scratch from start to finish like a homemade ravioli. I would like to, but the reality is in modern day we have technology and advancements that allow us to be a lot more flexible. We don't have to spend all day preparing food like we used to back in the day. But even though I could buy bread from the store and I could make waffles or English muffins that were frozen from the freezer section and pop them in a toaster, I still find a lot of joy in doing it from scratch. Yes, it takes longer, but it brings me back to the roots of what it was like to do that and have no other choice. And there's something about that that brings a lot of joy for me. Having food at our fingertips in the fridge is such a modern luxury, and we should really use it more often. We should make the doughs, we should prep the ingredients like we don't have any other options, and then keep them in the fridge, and you can still enjoy the benefits of modern day, going out having fun, driving our cars, using the dishwasher, using the laundry machine. All of those are time savers that allow you to do fun things with your kids, or maybe it's go to work and earn money. It allows you to just have more freedom and flexibility. You can also take advantage of these things and still cook from scratch. You can do sourdough, you can make doughs, you can have them ready to go in your fridge and have the best of both worlds. making sourdough einkorn English muffins with some fried eggs on top. This is one of my favorite breakfasts and we like to drizzle some raw local honey on the top as well. While I'm out and about today, I'm gonna be baking another sandwich loaf to have on hand. I just keep these things in rotation. So when the sourdough starter is already out and it's already fed, I'll go ahead and make two loaves of bread. I'll make a English muffin dough and have that ready to go. I'll make a pizza crust. And sometimes I just put them in the fridge for another time, but they do get used up quicker than I may have thought. In my sourdough at home ebook, I teach people about how to maintain sourdough starter in their home to make them feel more like they are living in the good old days of preparing food from scratch when they had no other choice. 
Today I'm looking at my einkorn sourdough crepe recipe. This is a recipe that works with sourdough discard or you can leave it fermenting overnight for the long-term fermentation benefits. You can find this book on the blog theduvalhomestead.com and I'll also link it below. I've been switching over to books recently instead of online blog posts because the blog posts have just too many ads in my opinion. So that is why I've been creating a lot of eBooks with all of my favorite recipes because there's nothing better in my opinion than taking out a book and actually reading the recipe. I like that it gets a little dirty, a little wet, there's some seasoning on it, some sourdough gets stuck on it. And to me, that's just all very cozy and nice. Well, I hope you got some inspiration from this video to cook from scratch, do things how our ancestors did them, and also to be really thankful for all of our modern luxuries. If you're brand new to my page, please hit that subscribe button. Every week I post a new video on farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. Don't forget to use my link below to check out organic makeup and skincare products by Tubes & Co. during their Black Friday sale. Thanks so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.